Assalamualaikum guys, Irfan back again with another video. And uh, today, we this video is going to be another video on pivot tables. We have done uh, pivot table videos, I believe, a couple of times uh, previously also. Uh, but this uh, video is going to be a little different because of the way that we are going to be implementing the pivot table. Now, if you remember in the previous uh, videos when we were doing or uh, looking at uh, pivot tables, the data was coming from a singular sheet, in a singular Excel sheet. Now, it is possible for you to have data uh, for the pivot table being pulled from multiple sheets. And that is what we are going to be looking at today. Now, in front of you uh, is an Excel file. Uh, we have used this sheet a few times earlier also. Basically, it's a sales ledger of a company called New York Burger Fries and Fast Food. Uh, they, uh, you know, customers of this company, and uh, they buy different products, uh, pizzas, french fries, tomato ketchup, and these are the outlets of franchises are located in the New York uh, state area. And each uh, area is, or each uh, maybe like a locality is uh, serviced by a different salesperson and the sale actually goes to a different uh, dealership. Now, uh, this is, uh, we'll be using this data as an example. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to splitting this into multiple sheets and then show you how we could do a pivot table and grab the data from different sheets and then construct the pivot table. Now you see what, what we have done is we have highlighted the first three columns in a, in a sh light green shade. Uh, that is because we'll be uh, clubbing those We'll be taking this and putting on the sheet. Basically, what, I'm, what we'll be doing is we'll be splitting this single sheet into multiple sheets with some, you know, three columns going in one sheet, four columns going in another sheet, and so on and so forth. And then when we are doing the pivot table, we'll grab data from all the sheets, combine them, and then uh, implement the pivot table. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, split this... Uh, sheet into three different sheets one is called this customer orders sales and salesperson so the first three columns are highlighted in green that will go into the customer order okay now what you also have to do is there has to be one column that has to that is common among all the sheets in this case we are taking this column here the dealership column now i will explain this later how uh, you actually uh, use this and what's, what's, what's the need to do this. But uh, just, just remember for now that the, the, the one table that is going to be common across one uh, column that is going to be, excuse me, that is going to be common uh, across uh, all the sheets has to be included. And that has to, uh, each entry needs to be unique. Okay? So, in the, 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 the first three columns are going into the customer order, okay? And then we are using the, the common table, uh, which we'll be using as a, as a key, dealership. Now, the next four columns are going to be forming the sales sheet, okay? And then again, the, the, the one column that's going to be re repeated among all three sheets the dealership and then the salesperson sales area that's going to form the third sheet okay and then obviously the the dealership now uh, like, like I said uh, the reason for this col column that we are repeating on all three sheets we will get into that in a little bit but uh, let's go ahead and first uh, start the basic uh, construction of the pivot table now, the first thing that we have to do is convert this into a table, okay? The way you do that is you go into insert, insert table. Now, this is a little misleading because you're not actually inserting a table. What you're doing is you are taking this existing, uh, you know, data and converting that into a table, 
So you're not exactly inserting a table, you're just converting this data into a table. So uh, just put your cursor anyway on this data here, then go to insert, table, and this gives you the, the total range of the table, and make sure this is checked. My table has headers, because what that is going to do is the first row, that's going to automatically become the field names. Okay, so make sure, uh, please ensure that uh, this is checked. So we click on OK, and there you have it. You see how the first row is, because we said uh, is the headers, so that's in a darker shade of blue. Uh, each, uh, you know, all the other lines are either light blue or white. They alternate, uh, just to make it easier to read. And what we have done is we took the data that was here earlier and converted them to a table. Okay? Now, Let's do the same. We're going to be doing the same thing to the other two sheets also. Now, one thing before we do that, let me just zoom in. See where it says table name, table one. We're going to be renaming now. Excel actually gives this table a name, which you, and you can refer to this table with a name, uh, just like in the, in the previous videos. What we have done is we could we, we could uh, name columns or cells. Okay, now. It's always better to give these, when you're make, making up these names or uh, renaming the, the ones that uh, Excel gives, uh, assigns uh, by default, give them uh, names that actually make some sense or has some connection to what you're doing. So, uh, let me just zoom out. Okay, this is the customer orders uh, table. So, let's just, get, let's just call it customer orders. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll do basically the same thing with this uh, sheet here. We've got the sales data, so we'll uh, convert that into a table again. Uh, also, uh, so we go to insert table, click on OK. Now, uh, you notice that uh, this is called table 2 by default, so we're going to rename that to sales so just so the, the table name actually match, matches the sheet it doesn't need to match it needs does not need to be the same but just make sure that you you name the table something that it uh, has a meaning to what you know what's being done at hand uh, now we go to the third sheet again uh, we convert we need to convert that into a table now for whatever reason if this is not checked like I said earlier make sure you check it uh, if you don't, then the first row is not the field names. So we want the first row to be a field name. So make sure that this is checked. Click on OK. And this Excel makes this by default, calls this table 3. We'll call it sales person. All right. So we've got, we had this sheet here. And we had used this sheet to construct a uh, pivot table. Now what we had done is, just, uh, this is just to recap. We we split it into three sheets. We you know converted them into, into tables. Okay, and we gave the names these tables names that it makes sense. Okay, now let's start constructing our pivot table. Okay, now the way you do that. Like, just like I had shown in, in the previous video, go to insert, click on pivot table. Okay, this gives you the, the table or range, and it will be inserted into a new worksheet. Here's the thing that's different in here in this case add this data to data model. Make sure, make sure that you check this and you click on OK. There you go. Now, if you look at the uh, uh, the pivot table right now, it does not look any different from what it used to in the previous videos, right? Now, but you notice there's it's got two th uh, options here: active and all. If you click on all, then you see all the three sheets, all the other three tables show up. Okay, that's why it's different. Now, 
if you remember we had talked about uh, let's just first move this towards the end and keeping up with the tradition let's name it something that makes sense okay so if you remember we had this column that was being repeated on all the sheets now the reason why you do that is because you want to be able to have one column with which you could link these three sheets together okay so the first entry in the customer orders is for Acme Pizza the first entry in the sales is for Acme Pizza the first entry for uh, the salesperson is Acme Pizza now the order can be different but using Acme Pizza you can say well tell me what how much sales did Acme Pizza generate or you know how much sales went through this dealership so you could go to the sales uh, sheet and just put a filter on Acme Pizza and tells you the revenue was 990000 282 dollars and the cost of goods sold was 761 755 okay so about uh, 240 thousand dollars is what 250 to 230 to 40 dollars what this uh, profit what this dealership was uh, able to bring us okay so uh, once again this column here is what we will use to link these three sheets together and the way you do that is you got to make sure that you are on this pivot table click on analyze and click on relationships now what we are doing here is we are essentially linking these three sheets together through that dealership column okay so we are going to be it says manage relationships we are going to be creating a new relationship and so the sales sheet and the column of dealership is connected to customer orders through dealership okay click on okay that's the first so you basically what you've done you have linked these two now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be linking the sales and the salesperson again through that same one uh, column okay so sales dealer because dealer is the one that's uh, common between the two oops sorry dealer okay click on okay there you go now what you have done is you have essentially linked these three sheets together now if you go to active okay um, you can see now say for example you want to mm, let's see what sales month yeah let's let's do a grouping by sales month so we click here we've got april august december and the financial year i'm going to move the financial year above so we've got 2011 12 june and march 12 and 13 december february march october and then 2013 14 december february january because um it's the fiscal year it follows is jan to uh, june uh, july to june okay now what you're going to be doing is you also want to bring in um the customer and the salesperson that handled the sale okay and the revenue that was generated and maybe the cost of goods sold okay now if you want to uh, ref, uh, f uh, def you know ref uh, define this uh, pivot table into a more of a tabular form that you're used to click on design report layout Click on tabular, okay. 
Now you see in 11-12, in the month of June, Julie did these two sales. Well, uh, I'm sorry, just one singular sale. Uh, this is the total. Let's get rid of this total here. And let's get rid of the monthly total also. There you go. So, in 11-12, um, in June, Julie generated a sale of $689,000. Uh, with the cost of goods as being 530,000. In March, it was bill, with slightly smaller sales. Now in 12-13, uh, in December, it was Bill and Bob uh, who did the sales. Bob again sold uh, in February, and then in March, it was John. In October, again, it was Bill, and then Julie from up here. So, this is now if you notice we've got data coming from this call this sheet here the customer order sheet we have data coming from the sales sheet and we have data coming from the salesperson sheet so we took these three sheets pull the data from all the three okay combine the data or link the data together using the dealership column and constructed the pivot table. Okay, so this is how easy it is to uh, create pivot tables when the data is coming from multiple sheets as opposed to just a single sheet that we have done or shown in uh, previous videos. I hope you like this video. Uh, if you did like this video, please kindly give it a thumbs up. And if you uh, like to see more videos like this please kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button uh, if you have any comments any questions about this video please uh, put it in the comments below and i'll try and get back to you uh, as soon as possible thank you very much